hear my head talk a bit louder so I can <laughs> hear the question. All right. Um, my, my veteran is Charles Reed. He was born March 25th, 1944. Uh, he served in the Air Force, and the Air Force, Navy, and the Marine Corps. Uh, he fought in, or he was in Vietnam and the first Gulf War. And uh, this interview is being conducted for the Veterans History Project at the Library of Congress. All right. Um, start off. Where we? Where and uh, where and when were you born? I was born in Niles, Michigan, in 1944, March 25th. Um, well, did you have any family members who also served in the military? My father served in World War II, and uh, my son also served in the Navy uh, after the First Gulf War, he was in for 13 years and then separated. Um, what were you doing before you enlisted, or before you joined the military? I was in high school. <laughs> I, um, I graduated in June of 1963 and then went in the Air Force in August of 1963. You joined the Air Force right, right after high school? Mm -hmm. Alrighty. So that you were enlisted then? I'm sorry. You were you were enlisted then? Yes, I enlisted. Alright. Um, okay. Uh, what was your what was what would be your main reason for joining the Air Force? Well, it was starting to the Vietnam War was not quite going yet, but uh, it looked like there was going to be a war. This was 1963, which was two years before the war actually started in, in, as far as our real involvement. But uh, I knew that I didn't want to be drafted. And my father served in the uh, Navy and I had a lot, of, um, a lot of good feelings about the service. So, so I decided that uh, I'd go in the Air Force. Uh, how was the training? Actually, uh, compared to the other services, the Air Force uh, basic training was uh, it was not easy. Uh, of course, not knowing what to expect when you go into service, it, uh, it's some of it's a surprise, but it wasn't as hard as I thought it would be. Uh, was there any specialized training for you because you're in the Air Force, or? Yes, I uh, I was trained as a veterinary technician. Uh, I was trained at Gunter Air Force Base in Alabama, and uh, I served in at Langley Air Force Base uh, in Virginia, uh, Aviano Air Base in Italy, and of course Comrade Bay in uh, Vietnam. And my main job was to take care of uh, government-owned animals and also do food inspection and sanitation inspections. All right. Um, how was the how was the military life for you? Um, in, like in the barracks and the food and the life with your unit. It was it was okay. I mean. Uh, being thrown in when you go to basic training, you're thrown in with about 60 different people from different parts of the country that uh, you've never been exposed to before. And, and through the basic training, you learn to work as a team and everybody try and get everybody through basic training. Uh, living in the barracks, uh, quite different from living at home course, but uh, it, it, with the structure that the military has, it, uh, it becomes quite easy and common to get along, I guess you could say. <laughs> um, so you said you served in Vietnam, correct? I'm sorry. You served in Vietnam? Yes, I did. And how was the 
Triple X. Told you. But how, um, how, um, oh man, I don't have to say that. Um, next to your brain, I'll scratch that. Um, did you uh, see any combat when you were in Vietnam? No, I did not serve in combat. Uh, we were, at the time, I was a uh, veterinary technician. Of course, we served in support of uh, the uh, base there at uh, Cameron Bay. And of course, there being a, in the field, it's, it's more like you have to be more attuned to uh, how you can keep the food safe. Of course, it was very hot there when we first got there. There wasn't a lot of refrigeration. You had to be very particular on how the food was prepared. Also, uh, we had 80 sentry dogs, German, German Shepherd sentry dogs there at Camel Bay. And our, my job was to help the veterinarian who was the doctor uh, take care of those dogs and keep them healthy so that they could be uh, serving on their posts around the base to uh, keep security. What'd you do in your off time? Um, what did we do in our off time? Just when you have any off time. <laughs> uh, we go to the exchange, uh, watch movies, uh, go to the club, drink beer. And also there at Cameron Bay, we had a we had a beach there at uh, Cameron Bay that uh, we could go to and relax on the beach. Uh, I happened to be playing softball one time and throwing the softball around at the beach and it was in the water. And my uh, high school class ring flew off my hand and it's still at Cameron Bay. Oh man. <laughs> Um, how did you stay in touch with your family when you were in Vietnam? Uh, write letters. Just daily letters? Uh, and sometimes we, we'd make uh, tapes, uh, sound tapes, and uh, send those home. Hmm. Absolutely. Um, all right. And you also said you served. Still going. Yes, it is. And you also said you served in the first Gulf War. Yes, I did. Um, so my job in the, in the Navy was a hospital foreman, and in the, the Marine Corps does not have their own medical personnel. So being the Marine Corps part of the Navy, the Navy provides the medical care for the Marines, and that was the reason I was with uh, the Marines in the first Gulf War. Uh, also, what made you go back, or what made you go from the Air Force to the Navy? Well, it's kind of interesting. In my break between uh, services, uh, I was working for a company over in Vietnam as a civilian contractor, um, providing maintenance on uh, Army airplanes. And when my time was up, with that job, I came back to the States and uh, the company had an opening down in Meridian, Mississippi. And so I went down there and uh, after a while, I, I finally figured out that I was not going to advance very far. <laughs> so I decided to go back into service. And at that time, the Air Force didn't have any openings in my old job specialty. So I decided to join the Navy. Um, hmm. Oh, were you just, um, when you returned home from the, I'll go back to the Vietnam War, but, or to Vietnam, when you returned home from Vietnam, was it, how was, um, was it emotional for you to see your family again? Hmm. Just to know that you returned home safely and all that. Yeah, in a way it was, um, uh, emotional to come back and. See the family again. Of course, I'd been over there for 18 months, 
and um, they had I hadn't seen them for a long time, and it was it was emotional. Um, some of the well, a lot of the during the Vietnam era, at the end there was a lot of protests going on and things like that. Mm -hmm. But I didn't experience what some other uh, military uh, men came back. Uh, I didn't see any protests. I didn't uh, get involved in anything like that. Uh, I don't know. It, uh, it was different. But I do understand that uh, some men had a hard time coming back, especially the men that served in the in the infantry that were in combat a lot, uh, they had a hard time adjusting to uh, coming back to civilian life. Absolutely. Um, do you, are you still in contact with some of your fellow veterans out there? Uh, no, I'm not, but I have been trying to find uh, this one guy that I served with in Vietnam and have not been successful so far. Uh, I, I do belong to the uh, the organization, the, the unit that I was assigned to over in Vietnam. They have a reunion every two years, and I'm I'm a member of their association. And, uh, so let's say that it's mostly that that unit was the 12th Tactical Fighter Wing, and they were mostly pilots that are, that belong to it. But uh, and there are a few men that uh, were at the hospital and that I was attached to, and, uh, but I haven't met any yet. What would be, if you had to think of one moment in either the Vietnam or uh, the can First Gulf War? Can you take a break? I need to get some water. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> All right. Um, okay, back to the question. What would... Okay, yeah, what would your, um, if you had to think of a time in either war where you just lost all hope and you just didn't think you were going to make it back? Say that again. Was there, ever, was there ever a time where you thought to yourself, something's going wrong, I'm not going to be able to make it back? No, I uh, didn't. Well, uh, when they had the rocket attack on Cameron Bay and March of 1968, I happened to be uh, checking the Sentry Dog uh, post, and we were out outside the, the perimeter. And when the rocket attack started, uh, it gave me a little uneasy feeling about being able to get back uh, without being shot by our own men, because uh, the the rocket attack was on the fuel dump at uh, Camon Bay, which was not anywhere close to where I was at. Hmm. Um, hmm. Okay. Oh, um, how would you say that your wartime experience impacted your life? I think the... Um, the fact that I spent so much time in the military uh, has made me more of a conservative individual, uh, more patriotic uh, than I would have been had I not been in the service. And do you have any, say, like just life lessons you could give someone? Do you have any like life lessons you would give someone if they were to join? If Say they wanted to join the um, military. Yeah, um, someone going into the into the military, go in with an open mind. Don't fight the system. Uh, do what your drill instructors tell you to do. Learn what they want you to learn, and that'll get you through uh, a lot of situations without a hard time. <laughs> um, do you know of any, uh, do you know where uh, your son 
um, was or what war he fought in? He did not. Um, he he went not? into the Navy after the uh, Gulf War. Actually, he went into the Navy. He was going through um, basic training at Great Lakes at the same time the Gulf War was going on. And uh, he graduated, I think, uh, I, I got back in April and he graduated from boot camp or basic training at uh, Great Lakes in May of 1991. So in a way, technically he was a veteran of the Gulf War, but he was not uh, involved in it, if you, if you will. Um, hmm. Oh, um, what were your emotions when you saw, or what when you, when you saw him return back from that day? Uh, it made me proud. I went to his graduation. And was very proud that he uh, completed his uh, basic training and uh, was in the Navy because I was in the Navy too at the time. Of course, mm -hmm. uh, I was kind of kind of sad that he got out of the service, but I understand why he did. Uh, being in the Navy or, or any service, especially in wartime like we are now, uh, you're separated from your family a lot, and there's a lot of hardships, not only on yourself, uh, being concerned about what what's happening and what's going on with your family and what they're uh, having to put up with, uh, and the hardships that the the wife and children have to go through. Um, he didn't want to uh, be separated from his family anymore, and that's the reason he got out. Hmm. Um, did you ever? Did you ever witness? Okay. Did you ever witness anything? Um, not bad, but like unusual when you were when you were um, in either Vietnam or the first Gulf War. Not that I can think of. I mean, our our job is basically my job at that time was like a nine to five job. Um, went to work in the morning, did your inspections or took care of the sick call for the for the dogs, and uh, it wasn't really. We were kind of were kind of confined on the base. We did didn't get to go out uh, away from the base very much. And uh, it was just basically like uh, any other job that I would have back here in the States of, of the Air Force Base. Of the whole time I was in the Navy, the first 10 years I was probably away from home more than half the time on deployments uh, to different places around the world. And served in uh, on board ship. Um, I was home ported in Hawaii and on the USS Coronado. We made a 10 month deployment to the Persian Gulf in 1988 during the time when they we the Navy was providing uh, escort duty for the uh, oil tankers that were going in and out of the Straits of Hormuz um, in the Persian Gulf, and that was that was kind of a, a trying time. But I've been on deployments to Norway, uh, Alaska, uh, Turkey, Puerto Rico, or not yeah Puerto Rico, Vieques, Puerto Rico, Panama, uh, but in quite a few places. It's an example of how being away from family. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, military life is, is something that um, to make a career of it, you have to have a mindset that uh, you're there to serve the people, protect the Constitution, and uh, you just let it. Uh, let it grow on you, I guess. A lot of people
people, uh, of course, today it's not not the same as it was when I went in. You don't have the draft like uh, we had during the Vietnam War. And uh, people that go into service today go in with the intention of generally making it a career. Because it's an all volunteer force today. Absolutely. So, in that regard, it, it's those people that go in today, they're going to stay in, make it a career, and uh, they, they, during Vietnam, people who were drafted, they probably didn't want to be there to begin with. Uh, but it's a, it, it's a different different mindset as far as making your career versus being drafted and doing your job. Um, I know during the Vietnam War there was a lot of time when times when the other GIs might not have a lot of things to keep them busy and they got involved in other other things that uh, you know, were illegal back in those days. They still are today of course marijuana and drugs and things like that. But, uh, I I didn't see that very much in, uh, in the Air Force. Uh, those, those guys that were in the Army probably were involved in that more than, uh, and of course, the Marine Corps and Navy. Uh, but I didn't see that at, during that time. One of the things I didn't mention is when I was in the, in the Navy attached to the Marine Corps, I was trained as a uh, parachuter, parachutist, and uh, did a lot of training, jumping into different places with the Marines. Uh, didn't have, uh, mainly because of the units I was attached to. That was, that was, I think that was the best time that I enjoyed the most in the military. This was my time, my time with the Marine Corps. 